Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, welcome back. Um, we're now going to start teaching uh, the sixth part of this uh, particular end time Bible study. So uh, I'm pretty excited. We're going to uh, dive right into these uh, these prophecies of Daniel. Uh, I'm not going to get very detailed into it. Uh, all I'm trying to do is just give you a foundation by which you can work with as you go on and you study it and, uh, and you want to get deeper in depth with it. I did tell you that if you wanted to know more depth uh, in reference to what we just started learning last week, uh, in reference to the statue uh, that the uh, King Nebuchadnezzar had, the dream and uh, the, the interpretation of it, um, you can go to Pastor Brownie's site at Rahob Both. New Life, I'll spell that for you, R-A-H-O-B-O-T-H, New Life Center, uh, and just type in the search Daniel, and you'll get his three last messages in reference to it. I really love how he put that together. Otherwise, uh, and everything's biblically based. Uh, also, I, I will inform you, uh, when it's scriptural, right, I love giving you th probably two to five scriptures to verify a fact, uh, and then we can uh, uh, build on that uh, foundation. And so, uh, uh, as, so as we go forward, um, it's not just what I said, but it's what we read, what thus saith the Lord, and that's what's important. I will also tell you when it's my own opinion. I'll let you know, hey, this is how I connected the dots. But understand, I'm like you. Okay, I, I understand this and this, but there's a story in there that I quite... Uh, I'm not familiar with and so in my imagination and with what I've read I try to connect the dots which is due to change <laughs> just for the sole fact that I'm just like you I, I, I I'm just trying to get it figured out uh, uh, but there are times when God will directly take me to certain script to scriptures that he'll connect the dots for me and then I'll share that with you okay um, but other than that uh, uh, we try to keep you know I I understand the responsibility of teaching this and I, I don't want to teach in such a way uh, that where my accountability to God is going, you know, uh, that where he'd be upset with me because I'm teaching something inappropriately that, that's not right. So, uh, with that, uh, Remnant-David Torres Jr. Uh, and that is our, our Remnant page. And so you'll find all these videos on there. Uh, you'll find other teachings and preachings we have on there, uh, as well as uh, preaching from uh, from other pastors and uh, from my son David, my daughter Monica, my, she does, uh, they both do such a wonderful, wonderful job. Uh, and as well as uh, a lot of teaching from people we've discipled throughout the years. And it's just wow, what, what a great job they do. Just to get their insight. On Wednesdays we have teaching for an hour. It starts at uh, 6, between 6 and 7 o'clock. And, uh, and we're very pretty strict when it comes we start at this time and we end at this time because we know that families uh, need to get home people have to eat dinner if they didn't eat dinner prior and so on so you know join us um, uh, again I'm going to fill the gaps in with with my opinions which is due to change um, uh, the scripture isn't going to change uh, what this statue means is isn't going to change us for the sole fact God interprets it for us uh, we got to understand that God is the one that gives us wisdom through that, he, we can understand the knowledge of God's Word. Therefore, when we do teach, we know what we're talking about. Uh, and we're not teaching something that, that's inappropriate. So, uh, God is the one that will give that. God gave it to the people of, in the Old Covenant, and as well as the New. And we went through all those scriptures. We studied that, where God, uh, He'll give us wisdom. What God did with Daniel is that God gave him wisdom and knowledge. It's, it's to such the point that he marveled the kings of that time, uh, and they were able to utilize him. And when they wanted to come down to the facts and the truth, who did they call? Daniel. Daniel would come in, and he would uh, uh, interpret the dream. And there was a, a one instance where he just told him what the dream was and then interpreted it. So uh, he, he, that's a gift that God had given him. Uh, and so... Uh, as well as uh, God gives us these gifts, right? We have all kinds of different gifts uh, that God gives us. Uh, and um, um, 
and that's being part of receiving the Holy Ghost. Some of us are uh, prophesying. Some of us uh, teachers. Some of us are preachers. Uh, as well as, as, as one that reveals the beginning to the end is God himself, right? We understand there's an order in the Word of God. You start from the beginning and you go to the end. You want to know the beginning of the story, you start from the beginning. You want to know the end, you go to the end. And so God's an orderly God. In fact, one of the very thing, first things he tells us when we come to him, he says, go get your house in order. Uh, you know, we want to be in service of the Lord. And so God says, if you want to be in service to me, then I need you to get your house in order. That's the very first concern of God's, okay? Also, we learn that there's only two covenants, old covenant, new covenant, when it comes to God's church. Uh, God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Uh, we find out that there are some things in the natural when it came with the tabernacle. I, ha I had that displayed here. Uh, that, that Those things in the natural was displaying something that was going to happen spiritually, something that God was going to do uh, uh, in the near future and how he was going to reconcile mankind back to himself. Uh, and it was going to be a shedding of blood. So through the, the learning of that tabernacle, I showed you there was only two covenants in that tabernacle, the old covenant and the new covenant, uh, uh, the, the Jewish or Israelites, uh, and then after that, the Gentiles. And this very image here starts that Gentile um, period. Because then you had the governments, you had the kingdoms, you have, you know, the uh, uh, of, uh, Gentile nations that, that took place, all right? Well, last week, uh, I had stopped at uh, reading a portion of Daniel's prophecy, uh, and that, that is Daniel chapter 2, verses 1 through 48. We got to verse 32, 30, uh, 34, uh, and then I had showed you this image here, and so that's where we're going to start with, okay? I am going to reread from verse 32. It said, the head, uh, the head of the statue was made of pure gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, legs of iron, its feet partly iron and partly of baked clay. While you were watching, a rock was cut out, but not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay, and it smashed them. So this is the vision that Daniel had. And he's telling the king, this is what you, what, what you saw in your dream. And then he goes on, but I'm going to interpret the dream for you as well. Because God has given him the wisdom and the knowledge to interpret it. Verse 35, Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were all broken to pieces and became like shaft on a threshing floor in the summer. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace. But the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the whole earth. Okay, so here we have the explanation of this statue. And what he's saying is that these, uh, as we read it, I'm just going to breathe through it, that these world powers are going to come take place. And he's going to tell them, hey, the head of gold, that's you. You're the head of gold. And then after you, after you, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, there's going to be another world power, Media Persia, that's going to rise up. And after that, there's going to be another world power that's going to rise up, uh, and that will be Greece. And after that, there will be another world power that rises up. And so that's what we're, uh, as we go into this interpretation, that we're going to find out. So these are world powers that rise up consecutively after, after one another, okay? So it takes us through a space of time. And that's very important to understand. And then after it all, then he says, uh, 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 at the end of it, the, uh, there's, at the end of these world powers, then there's going to be a rock that's going to be cut out, but not by human hands. And it's going to be thrown at this world power of government, and it's going to completely annihilate it and destroy it. And it's going to fill the whole earth. What does the Bible says? Who's the rock, right? Well, we find out that Christ is the rock. And we're going to read those scriptures to verify all those things. I just want to simply explain it to you because now when I read it, you'll have better understanding. So let's continue reading. I'm going to start uh, in verse 36. And then Daniel says, hey, king, listen, let me explain to you now what this means. He says, this was the dream, and now we will interpret it to the king. 
Your majesty, you are the king of kings, the God of heaven has given you dominion and power and might and glory. In your hands he has placed all mankind and the beasts of the field and the birds of the sky, wherever they live. He has made you ruler over them all. You are that head of gold. So there's no guessing on who's the head of gold. After you, another kingdom will rise, inferior to yours. Next, a third kingdom, one of bronze, will rule over the whole earth. Finally, there will be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron. For iron breaks and smashes everything, and as iron breaks things to pieces, so it will crush and break all the others. And we find out in a further prophecy, we, we know who these nations are. And not only that, but in our own history, we know who these nations were. Uh, so... Uh, uh, verse 41, just as you saw that the feet and the toes were partly of baked clay and partly of iron, so this will be divided a divided kingdom. So now we're looking at the feet. The feet, there are ten toes. Uh, uh, yet it will have some of the strength of the iron in it, and even as you saw, iron mixed with clay. As the toes were partly iron and partly clay, so this kingdom will be partly strong and partly brittle. And just as you saw the iron mixed with baked clay, so the people will be a mixture and will not remain united any more than iron mixes with clay. So it's talking about uh, um, that the mixture of it is in reference to uh, the unity of it, okay? And so uh, uh, the clay is not unified with the iron. It, it, there's a separation that's, that's taking place. Uh, and we'll learn more about that as, as we go forward. Um, uh, I, I love what Pastor Brownie, uh, uh, how he he talks about the, the different metals with, within this statue. Uh, I think it's such a worth a listen to. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. The rock will. When God comes back and he says, hey, you know, I had enough uh, of, of the world and its government, then he is going to come and he is going to institute to a government and he himself will govern and guess who's going to govern with him the bride of Christ will we will govern with God during this period of time it's called the millennial period and that millennial period lasts for about a thousand years uh, and we will govern with Christ during that time nor will it be left to another people it will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end but it will itself endure forever this is the meaning of vision of the rock cut out of the mountain, but not by human hands. Okay? It's spiritual. Get it? It, 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 it? Not by a human. A rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, silver, and gold to pieces. The great God has shown the king uh, that what will take place in the future. The dream is true, and its interpretation is trustworthy. So he said, you can take this to the bank. It doesn't matter what... Um, what pastors say or what uh, mankind says. God said, my interpretation is true and right. There's no way to go around it. In Psalms 18.2, it says God is the rock. And that's in the Old Testament. King David didn't know Jesus. But he knew that God was the rock. In 1 Corinthians 3.11, and 1 uh, uh, Corinthians 10, 1 through 5 it says that Jesus is the rock. We find in Matthew 16, 13 through 18, that it says that the revelation of Christ is the very foundation by which he tells Peter to build his church upon. In other words, understanding who Jesus Christ is, which he is God manifested in the flesh, brings all this to perfect understanding. Uh, then King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor and, and ordered that an offering and incense uh, be uh, presented to him. And so I'm not going to go any further with that. I do want to hit the tail end of verse 48. He says, He made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and placed him in charge of all its wise men. Now understand, before we started reading, I had read some scriptures on how God had given wisdom to Daniel and had given him these understandings. And so we find out that the head of gold is Babylon, that the chest and arms of silver are Media and Persia. How do we know this? 
Well, in history, it's taught to us that the next world power was Media and the Persians. Uh, and in fact, in Daniel chapter 8, verse 3, uh, there is another prophecy that God interprets, and he tells us who that is. In Daniel 8, 3, he says, the ram with two horns, and then he goes on to tell, uh, uh, to interpret that that's Media and Persia. The ram with two horns. Uh, and then we find out that the belly and thigh of bronze is Alexander, is Greece. That's when Alexander the Great had took control, uh, and he conquered, and he ended up dying as a young man. After he died, his they separated uh, everything he conquered and had given it to four different generals. And so in the same chapter, chapter 8 of Daniel, verse 5, there he talks about a goat with a prominent horn. And then he says that the, that, that, that horn is broken, uh, and then once it's broken off, then four other prominent horns grew, which are in reference to the four generals. So that's not me guessing. That's what the scripture says in chapter 8, verses 3 and verses 5. So uh, these are, we're not guessing at these world powers. Uh, we understand the legs of iron, which uh, as uh, later on, as we study through, who was, who was the conquering... Um, uh, king of that time. It was Caesar, right? Uh, you have the Roman Empire that, uh, that, that had taken control at that time. And they were the ones that were there during when Jesus came into the picture. Uh, and as we go further, how about the beast uh, with iron teeth and ten horns? Small horns uh, with eyes and with a mouth. And so, uh, um, you know, now we have these ten horns that, that are manifested in this story and what does that all that mean well we're going to get into these things we're going to talk about that i will tell you they're all in the same they're not just because it says 10 toes and now 10 horns it, it's there's not a separation here uh there's a meaning uh, uh where it refers to the same thing because the feet are in, re in reference to the last world power on earth um, and then we have the feet of iron and clay, uh, 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 which is a divided kingdom. And so, uh, 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 and as that kingdom is trying to reunite and become what at one time was taught would be a, a one world order. Uh, and right now, uh, you know, we have a lot of separation. Uh, but that was, that's biblical, that, 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 that's prophecy being fulfilled. But somehow there will be one. Uh, that's going to come, and he's going to unite all that. He's going to unite th that division, and he's going to bring together ten kingdoms. Uh, and then, uh, through the process of subduing three of those kingdoms, he will become the supreme chancellor or the supreme uh, uh, president or king of authority. And uh, that will institute what we call globalism, uh, or that, or a, uh, or a one world order. Back in the day, that's what it was called, okay? Now it's called globalism. Those two words, uh, the only difference is they changed the name of it uh, this way uh, because uh, the one word order, people just push that away. So they give it a new name. That way it doesn't sound so threatening. Um, and so uh, as we go on, um, I want to read the story of Daniel's dream of the four beasts and its interpretation, and we find that in Daniel chapter 7, okay? But before I do that, so we understand that the head of gold is Babylon, led by Nebuchadnezzar, uh, uh, and as you see these four beasts, that they line up right next to it, what did I say about uh, the animals, right? That you cannot see spirit. So God gave these spirits a, a familiar body or a host. They needed a host to, in order to enter. Uh, then we could visualize them and see them. And so that's what you see here. They're symbolic for the host that these spirits had subdued in order to do the very thing that they wanted to do in these different kingdoms. As you see, they line them up side by side with the world powers that came up. But I believe, understand, spirits don't die. They don't die. You cannot take a spirit and, 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 and kill it, okay? And so therefore, uh, we can call closed doors to it. We can um, be protected from them. But here, we find out that these spirits, 
as they rise in power one after another, uh, that finally this last one, which is the Antichrist spirit, uh, uh, is going to have dominion of the world and, and what is called the end times. Uh, and then these powers, uh, as we're going to study right now, they're going to rise up out of the sea and they are going to all have dominion at the same time. Okay? So it's a little different. Now, I believe, this is my opinion, I believe that the Spirit, because uh, back in the day, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, when you look at their art, you look at uh, what represented them, it was a lion with wings. And so that represented them. Uh, and so uh, uh, the bear, it did, I, I did a study on that, that represented uh, media Persia. Uh, and then you have this leopard. And so as you go on, what represented these, these countries at its time? And now we find that uh, uh, once these world powers were gone, uh, that these spirits are still manifested in the earth, but they are in the sea. And the, as we read, we're going to find out they come out of the sea, and, uh, and they all reign at the same time. And I'll read it to you, and you'll see why, uh, why that is. Um, uh, uh, let me see, is there anything else? Uh, then, I had told you we didn't have to guess, because Daniel told us right off the back who, this, who the head of gold is. Uh, and, and when we read in um, Daniel 8, 20, 21, we find out that the ram uh, is beating on Persia. explains it. The same thing with, uh, 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 as, as the belly and thighs, uh, uh, we find out that the goat with the prominent horn, that that represented uh, Greece and Alexander the Great. Uh, and as you see this leopard in representation, as uh, the one horn was broken, you end up with the four heads, which represent the four generals. Okay? Now, these are the spirits I'm talking about. I don't have a, prob I don't have a problem with, uh, with, with that. Me, personally. You, you could. And, and um, there are some things that can't be changed because it, it's interpreted for us. But the part of these animals, how they represent... Um, uh, I'll bring it uh, uh, closer to home as I read the scriptures. Uh, and then we find out Rome it, it, uh, is said to be, uh, uh, the iron legs is said to be Rome. And then we have to deal with these feet. And these feet represent this Antichrist spirit. Uh, and, and we'll dig deeper into that. But I just want to try to make it as simple as I can. We see the rock, the rock is... Is, is Christ and finally he comes and he tumbles down these world governments and now he takes over and once he takes over that's where the millennial um, starts and that will last for over a thousand years and God will govern that time uh, and the Bible says that he will cast the Antichrist uh, into the lake uh, uh, into the lake of fire during that time uh, and uh, he will control everything uh, and I won't go any more deeper than that. Uh, let's start, go get back to the scriptures. I'm going to start with Daniel 7, verses 1 through 28. Now this is uh, Belshazzar. This is uh, the king's son. So after the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, now we, uh, we, we're going to read about Belshazzar. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions passed through his mind as he was lying in bed. He wrote down the substance of his dream. Daniel said, In my vision at night I looked, and there before me were four winds of heaven churning up the great sea. For a great, four great beasts, each different from the others, came up out of the sea. So they all came out, up, up at the same time. Okay, The first was like a lion, and it had wings of an eagle. Okay, So... Um, I think what's important to understand, if they are all up at the same time, since we can't see these invisible spirits, then God has given them a vehicle or a host by which we can visualize them and have a better understanding of them. Okay? So, um, many uh, Bible scholars, as they teach, uh, the lion was England. Uh, and the wings that were plucked off represented the United States of America. Because as we read, it says, I watched until... Now understand, when we read scripture, there is such an accuracy that uh, even uh, when uh, Media Persia 
took over, God pinpointed Cyrus's name by name. By name. Only God can do that in his word. Next thing you know, it happened. Just as it was forewritten. Okay? Uh, and, and, and that was in the old scrolls. And sure enough, here comes Cyrus into the picture, and he becomes, he becomes a, a king. I watched until its wings were torn off, and it was lifted from the ground so that it stood on two feet like a human being, and the mind of a human was given to it. So you see, the wings, eagle wings were plucked off, uh, and then it, it, it became a, a, a world power of its own. But this one had a uh, human mind. Uh, in other words, it was able to govern itself. And there before me was a second beast, which looked like a bear. So now we have a bear into the picture. So we find out who represents this bear in our age today. If we are living at end times, okay, then we have to try to figure out who is this bear then. It was raised up one of its sides and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. It was told, get up and eat your fill of flesh. So in other words, it went and it, it was destroying and, and, and uh, that's what it was its purpose. It, it was strong uh, and it, it was very mischief. After that, I looked, and there before me was another beast, one that looked like a leopard. And on its back, it had four wings like those of a bird. And so, uh, who would represent the leopard today? And that's something that uh, we look at and, and we have to understand. Because after this division, Daniel's like, man, I was perplexed. I was like, what? I didn't quite get all that, God. I knew the statue. But what is this? And I think there's a lot to learn as we continue to read on. So another beast, one that looked uh, like a leopard. And on its back, it had four wings, you know, uh, like those of a bird. In other words, it was quick. It, had, it, it, it went swiftly. And so it is said that that could possibly be Germany. Could it be? Well, they are a world power, uh, in, industrial-wise. Uh, at this point, understand that through, that, uh, through Germany, uh, we had Hitler... Uh, that was dominating the earth at one time, and he wanted to annihilate the entire world and, and bring in a, a one world order. Well, that's why they don't want to call it one world order any longer. And he was the third right. Right now, Germany claims itself to be the fourth right, which would be on par with the four heads on the leopard. Uh, and if you do, you go to their uh, Google their pages and stuff, and you'll find their government uh, claims to be the fourth right. Uh, uh, this beast had four heads, and it was given authority to rule. After that, in my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was a fourth beast, terrifying, frightening, and very powerful. Now we're talking about this, uh, the Antichrist, the, uh, the spirit. Uh, this beast is representing that, anti -spirit, that, that uh, Antichrist spirit. It had large iron teeth. It crushed and devoured the victims and trampled underfoot whatever, uh, whatever was left. It was different from all the former beasts, and it had ten horns. While I was thinking about the horns, there before me was another horn, a little one, which came up among them, and three of the first horns were uprooted before it. This horn had eyes like the eyes of a human being and a mouth that spoke boastfully, and that was the Antichrist. He was an elegant speaker. He was smart. He wasn't a dumb person. He was well-educated, and uh, he got the world to get on par with him, or he will get the world to be on par with him. Now, understand this. The Bible says the Antichrist can't show himself until the greater, which is the Holy Ghost, is gone from the earth. So once the greater, which is the Holy Ghost, greater is he that's in you and I, uh, is gone, and he takes his bride, then the Antichrist can do what it wants to do. So it's not going to show his head till then. But he is implementing a government. Verse 9, As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days uh, took his seat. Now, in Daniel's vision, he didn't know Jesus Christ. All he knew is of God. So this is who he is referring to. He says, the ancient of days, God Almighty. He took his seat. 
His clothing was white as snow. His hair uh, of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. So he has this vision, which is similar to the one that Ezekiel had in chapter 1, verses 4 through 24. Ezekiel has a manifestation, a very familiar vision, uh, and with these wheels uh, 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 that are rotating on the bottom of it. Uh, and Ezekiel, what he was seeing at that time, uh, and this is my belief, is he was seeing God coming to uh, coming to earth with his spirit, feel, and he's uh, filling people, and he's using them as his body, and the Bible says that he goes throughout the earth, and he fills the whole world. He goes east, west, north, south, because we're his body. Listen, a church isn't a building. A church is us. We're the church, and we are to go out and go forth. Uh, in, in verse 21, it says, The four living being spirits are in the wheels. So the, the living, uh, uh, there are these four living, the, the Bible says they are living beings, or the four beasts. They're living beings. And we're going to learn more about that when we read Revelation. So I'm not going to give you more than that. But they are living beings. In other words, the living uh, bride of Christ that goes throughout the world to spread the gospel. His throat was like flaming fire and its wheels were ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, uh, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousands times ten thousand stood before him. And the courts was seated. What are you talking about here? And the books were open. Well, he's talking about something uh, uh, that takes place in Revelations. Chapter 20, verses 11, 10. I'll read it to you. Then I saw a great white throne and, uh, and him who was seated on it. Not them. Him who was seated on it. The Ancient of Days. The earth and the heaven. Now, God is a spirit. You can't see God. Let's continue. Let's, let's learn this. But he sees someone on the throne. The earth and the heavens fled from the, his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead were, uh, uh, that were in it, and, the, and death and Hades gave up the dead were, that were uh, in them, and each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Okay, So this is what he's referring to here. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Now I'm telling you, uh, according to my study and what we have learned that these that there are thousands upon thousands when God judges his bride will be with him during that seven year of tribulation that period of seven years of tribulation the church goes up prior and we're gonna we're gonna learn that as, as we read through to tribulation then there's a, a, a there is uh, a wedding supper that takes place between those seven years. Now we find that we are now being seated with Christ. We are being seated with, with I mean, with God. And uh, it says, as 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him, and the courts were seated. And then it starts, uh, when the books are open, then starts the judgment. So we have this judgment that, that, that has started, what's the seats? Uh, once they were seated. Verse 11. Then I continued to watch because the boastful words, the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire. And that's the Antichrist. He's the first one thrown into, the, into, this, uh, uh, into this blazing fire or fire and brimstone. So no one's there yet. He's the first. And we'll find out who's going to be the second who talks at the false prophet and then the devil will be the third thrown into that verse 12 now listen to this very carefully because there's another key here the other beast had been stripped of their authority but were allowed to live for a period of time so when 
uh, the Antichrist, when he is conquered by this rock, when God comes uh, uh, during that war of Armageddon to, to fight this war with his church, with his bride, the Bible says, now we find out that uh, 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 these nations that were in existence, these other an animals, what they represent these spirits, uh, that uh, their power is taken away from them. And then that they're allowed to live for a period of time, right into the millennial period. So these world powers have to be in existence at the end times. And I'm talking about right before the War of Armageddon. Let me read it again, verse 12. The other beasts had been stripped of their authority, but were allowed to live for a period of time. Because all these other nations, right, uh, uh, Greece, Media, Persia, Babylon, that, that, that came up in consecutive orders and, and, and they were conquered one after another. In my vision at night I looked and there before me was one like a son of man. Okay, now he, he sees the son of man. He doesn't say Jesus because he doesn't know Jesus. But he says, now there's one that's coming and he has a flesh like man does. You see that? Coming with the clouds of heaven, he approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. Now listen to this. There's a big key here. Now he sees that this man comes in the presence of God. And what happens in verse 14? He was given authority, glory, sovereign power. All nations and people of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. So he is given authority. Uh, uh, given authority and he's given glory. Now, this is the, the issue. In Isaiah 42, verse 8, God says, I alone am the Lord your God. There's no other God that I will share my glory with. What does God say? There's no God to the left. There's no God to the right. God says, I'm a jealous God. I am not going to share my authority with anybody. Well, he just gave it to somebody here. You know why he gave it to him? Because he gave it to himself. He was showing Daniel that the Son of God was a manifestation of God in a fleshly form. God himself. Did Daniel get the revelation of that? I don't know. But he is telling us what he witnessed. Verse 15, now we're going to talk about the interpretation of the dream. I, Daniel, was troubled in spirit, and the vision that passed through my mind disturbed me. I approached one of those standing there and asked him the meaning of all this. So he told me and gave me the interpretation of these things. The four beasts are four kings that will rise from the earth. So they'll, they're going to rise up out of the sea, we learned, right, prior to that. But the holy people, the most high, will receive the kingdom and will possess it. Wait, who are these holy people? According to Daniel, only holy people he knows is him. They're set apart. They are saints of God. Later on, we read uh, when we uh, read about seven weeks of Daniel, God says, this is to you and your people. This is a reference to you guys, Daniel. And Daniel's Jew. He's Jewish. So remember I told you in the Old uh, Testament, it talks, it calls the, the, the Old Covenant People, saints of God. They are holy people. It's the same word. It means set apart. Again, let me read verse 18. But the holy people, the Most High, who received the kingdom. Did you know that they're promised the land of Canaan? They're promised the world. The saints are promised heaven. There's a difference here. And they will possess it forever. It's going to be their land. That was the promise he gave Abraham. Yes, forever and ever. Then I wanted to know the meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, the most terrifying, with its iron teeth and bronze claws, the beast that crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. I also wanted to know about the horn on its head and about the other horns that came up, before which three of, fell, three of the horns fell, and the horn that looked more imposing than the others, and that had eyes and a mouth that spoke boastfully. 
That one horn was the Antichrist. What he's saying is that this horn is going to come. He's going to take dominion from three different kingdoms. And that's how he's going to be the representative of that uh, ten-toe kingdom or that ten-horn kingdom. I, as I watched, this horn was waging war against the holy people and defeating them. Who are these holy people? It, it, it's the Jewish community of people. It's Israel. But the Bible says, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. He's not going to defeat us. He can't defeat us. In fact, the greater's got to be gone than he can do. He can't do what he wants to do until the greater's gone. He's not defeating us. The Bible calls us overcomers. We're born again. So he's waging war against the holy people and defeating them. Until the ancient days came and pronounced judgment in favor of his holy people. So understand that the old, uh, old covenant church or Jews they, or, or, or Israelites, they did not know Jesus. They didn't know him of the Most High. And time came when they possessed the kingdom. So a time will come when they'll possess the kingdom, the land, the promised land. He gave me this explanation. The four beasts is the fourth kingdom that will appear on earth. It will be different from all the other kingdoms and will devour the whole earth, trampling it down and crushing it. The ten horns are ten kings who will come from this kingdom. After them, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. He will subdue three kings. He will speak against uh, the Most High and oppress the holy people and try to change the set times and laws. So he's going to come and he's going to try to change what God had written. Because he knows if he can destroy the lineage of the Jews, he can prevent God from doing what he wants to do. Is that setting in? He's trying to change the course of the future through this process by annihilating the Jewish community. And he tried to do it through Hitler. But it was prophesied that that would happen, that they would be scattered throughout the entire world. But then it was also prophesied that God would regather them to their land once again, and they would become a nation. And in 1948, what happened? Israel became a nation. The holy people was delivered into his hands for a time, times, and half a time. The Bible says that there's going to be a period of time, it's going to be of seven years, we're only talking about three and a half years here, we'll read the word time, times, and half a time, it puts a number to it, and that number, according to the Jewish a calendar comes out to three and a half years. So there's a three and a half years and there's another three and a half years. But the court will sit and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. Then the so sovereignty, power, and greatness of all kingdoms under heaven will be handed over to the holy people uh, of the Most High. His kingdom will, will be an everlasting kingdom and all rulers will worship and obey him. This is the end of the matter. And the Daniel says, man, I was deeply troubled. By my thoughts and my face turned pale but I kept the matter to myself again focusing on the, uh, uh, that verse 11 and 12 uh, that, you know that the uh, the body was thrown into the blaze of uh, the other beasts had been stripped of their authority but were allowed to live for a period of time talking about those other beasts their power was taken away from them they were allowed to uh, to live under the new government, which will be this government Jesus Christ is going to implement. Next week, we're going to talk about God's holy people, the Israelites, and we're going to read scriptures in reference to to verify that what we're reading here is God's holy, is His holy people, the old covenant. That's why I told you you got to know who is the old and who is the new. Get rid of religion. Now, are you in the old covenant? Or are you in the new covenant? That's what you've got to understand. Jesus was an old. And he was in the new, the Bible says. Because he was circumcised. But then he brought to us a new covenant, which was circumcision of the heart, okay? Remember, we learned about all those things. So I'm going to uh, stop us there. Uh, and hopefully we're going to get into the 70 weeks of Daniel. It looks like uh, uh, we'll verify the fact that 
uh, these are saints of God, uh, and, and we'll go and read some uh, scriptures from the Old Testament to verify that. Uh, and, then, and then we're going to get into Daniel 7 weeks, uh, and, uh, uh, and I'll have a different chart for that. I hope this was helpful. Um, I, I hope that you understand the time we're living in. Right now there is a push for globalism. Globalism is one world order. What they were, the governments of the land believe that there can be a utopia if they are given supreme power and to govern over us and to watch over us and to make sure that none of us fall out of line. So through this process, they want to govern the world. And in, uh, through that process, they want to use that uh, one world government to annihilate Israel. That's the plan. Get rid of her. By doing that, they believe, uh, the Antichrist spirit believes by through, uh, through doing this, he can stop what's, what's coming up next. And we're going to learn what those things are. But according to God, God will defeat him. Right now, we defeat him personally because greater see that's in us, meaning the spirit of God. When we're filled with God's spirit. We can defeat the enemy. We can defeat the flesh, and we can walk in a holy manner with God. I'm going to be posting up a message that my daughter taught, and I think it's going to more explain on how even though sin seems to attach itself to us, how we can be in the presence of God through humbleness, and, uh, and how God will deal with us and help us cope with the sin in our lives and help us to get rid of that sin. Okay? So I'll close it here. I'm going to uh, close in prayer uh, real quickly. Um, thank you for your time. I hope this was a blessing to you. Uh, I'd like to uh, just pray and just get right into it. So, you know, I don't, uh, I don't want people to get upset. Ah, he didn't pray with us prior to getting started. Oh, I did, I, listen, I, uh, those things are done. If I believe it, it's a shorter message. So, you know, I can take time to pray with you prior than I will. Uh, but I will close in prayer today. Lord God, grateful and thankful we are. Just pray, Lord God, and do bless us as, as we all, Lord God, uh, go our separate ways. I thank you, Lord God, for this lesson. I thank you, Lord God, for this revealment, for your wisdom. I pray, Lord God, that we will take the time, Lord God, to read these scriptures, Lord God, and to seek for ourselves, Lord. I pray that there was a foundation that's been put out, Lord God, that we can build upon, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for using me as a teacher. I thank you for, Lord God, that we're all as students able to absorb it, Lord. I pray, Lord, that your mighty hand of protection will continue to go with us, Lord God, that your guardian angels, Lord God, would go forth, Jesus, that you would surround our family members as we go to and fro, and that, Lord God, you preserve us, Lord God, uh, uh, throughout the week, Lord God. And until next week that we meet together, that you, would, Lord God, would help me, Lord God, to put together this message of Daniel uh, on the 70th week that I could explain it in such a way that uh, of simplisticness that we would all have understanding. In your precious and holy name, Lord God, we need you, Lord God. Lord, we put our sins under your blood, Lord. And we petition your courts constantly for our families, Lord God. So, Lord God, we love you, we appreciate you, and we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you.